Everyone, I'm John Rodriguez, and today I'm going to talk to you about how Android M broke Leaked Canary and how we're fixing it. Before Leaked Canary, to analyze an out-of-memory error, you would have had to write a custom exception handler like this, and pass in a context. Sorry if the font size isn't very uh, conducive to viewing. Um, pass it a context so that when an out-of-memory error occurred, you could trigger a heap dump and write the resulting hprof file to secondary storage. As an alternative, you could have used the Android device monitor to manually generate these heap dumps from a device or an emulator. This is now baked into the Android monitor view in Android Studio. Once you attain the heap dump profile, you could then use the hprof converter provided by the SDK tools to convert the hprof uh, file from a custom Android format to a Java format that's more standard and analyze it using a tool like the Eclipse Memory Analyzer tool. This is the way it used to be done. You then start running a bunch of queries as you attempt to search for the cause of the leak. And if you've done this before, you know that doing this over and over again, trying to find the root cause of a problem, is definitely a chore. Then in May of last year, PY, he released Leak Canary, a memory leak detection library for Android and Java. And the Android community rejoiced. And so did Square, because our flagship point of sale app saw a 94% fewer crash rate as a result of our memory errors due to leak canary. But then came Marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> Just 20 days after leak canary was released, M Preview 1 was released to the public at Google I.O. By the next day, the first issue to leak canary was filed, followed by many others. However, converting the hprof file and opening it with another memory analyzer tool worked just fine. So what was the problem? Well, let's just blame Matt. The memory analyzer tool library code that we were using was incorporated into Leak Canary. Well, that must be the problem, right? So if in two months, HaHa, -ha, which is known as the headless Android Leap Analyze, uh, Heap Analyzer tool, a library that Leak Canary relies on, was rewritten uh, to use the Android version, the Heap Parsing Library, perfectly. In addition to gutting out the parsing library, another change was made to Leak Canary to account for a major change to string.java in Android. Java strings are immutable, so up until Marshmallow, the SDK allowed substrings to share the car array of their parent with a different offset and count. This meant holding on to a small substring uh, could hold on to a larger parent string in memory and cause a huge uh, problem with garbage collection. It would prevent the parent string, which could be larger, from being garbage collected. Said. As a marshmallow, the car array representing the string content is now inlined in the native string object in the C++ side. As a result, uh, all the familiar string methods that you know and love, the concat, the carat, all those functions or those methods are now uh, native methods. Since the car array is now inlined in the string object, substrings can't share their parent car array anymore, and as a result, the offset isn't needed either, so that's also been removed in Android. You may have read about this in PUI's posts on our corner engineering blog. To look up threat names in a hprof file, haha -ha reaches into the, the car array of a string object. You need to find the name of the thread, and so there's a lot of interaction in that hprof file. Once the car array field was removed, any attempt to, uh, to parse a generated heap dump that was generated by um, mpreview2 would crash. Luckily, the car buffer is still serialized in the heap 16 bytes after the string address. And so the hack you see here allowed Leak Canary to work again with Android M Preview 2. Then came the final release of Marshmallow. In that release, uh, more crashes, and it appeared that the string issue came back. Some investigation revealed that the Android team decided that, all right, well, we removed the car rate field from the string object, but let's put it in the, the hprof file that's dumped, and that should fix everything, right? So they insert a fake field, and so instead of executing the else block that we had originally added to account for the absence of that car array, we're back to executing the if block. Great, we're back to the way it should be, except there's still no offset field, so we're still crashing. So we added another hack. This was included in 1.4 beta 1, released on January 8th, and that's it, right? We fixed everything? Nope, not yet. Because we fixed the definite crashers in string.java, we enabled the community to use Leak Canary again, 
and highlighted actually a bigger problem in the M, in the M heat dump. It's a problem that PY had explored before. Lee Canary relies on HaHa for two phases. It uses it to parse the HPROF file, and then it uses it to find the leak trace using a shortest path algorithm. Uh, since uh, most of the heat dump here is taken up, um, since most of the heat here allocated to the analyzer process is taken up by parsing the heat dump, there was little room left for analysis of it. And we can see that if we compare heat dumps generated by a similar fashion on emulators running APIs 19 and 23, that the number of object instances has increased dramatically. To understand why, we're going to have to talk about what a garbage collector root is, also known as a GC root. A GC root is an object that is flagged as exempt from garbage collection. Examples of GC roots include system classes, live threads, local variables, the method parameters, JNI references, synchronization monitors, or anything that the VM holds at the time and considers that should never be, uh, or at the current time, should not be uh, garbage collected. When a set of objects allocated in the heap, accounting of course for circular references, are no longer referenced directly or indirectly by the GC root or by any of the GC roots, it's considered eligible for garbage collection. Okay, so now that we know what a GC root is, why do M heap dumps have so many of them? Expanding the mysterious unknown root type for both heap samples, we see that there are many more strings, okay? This makes sense because of the aforementioned changes where substrings no longer refer to their parent strings. If you're not referring to the memory address, you're going to have a copy of it because of the immutability of the string class. Looking at the system class root type, we see that there are now a ton of class arrays and interarrays present. Digging even deeper, we see that the, ca the dex cache instances reference large interarrays uh, representing the resolved methods in a dex file and the large class arrays representing resolve types, all of which are GC roots. So it looks like we're gonna to have to live with this in memory. Um, is there something that, is there anything else we can do about it? Well, it turns out we can. Running some quick checks over uh, perflib reveals that there's a ton of duplication among the GC roots, especially the dex cache roots. Deduping the, the GC roots reduces the memory pressure in this example by 80%. The PR for this change is relatively small. It just dedupes the GC roots present in the perflib snapshot object. And it's ready to merge pending peer review. We'll also be looking into ways to reduce memory pressure incurred during the analysis phase. After that, we're going to be looking ahead, forward looking, towards any changes, if any, that Android N will introduce. In closing, we're aware that many of you have been waiting for solutions to issues caused by Android N. Remember that we're always open to reviewing pull requests from the community. Thank you.